What's going on guys? Andy here, G4 Outdoors. We are at lovely Smithville Lake. Randy is still in Florida, so he's not here to go fishing with me. But Ian's taking me out today. You guys remember Ian, I took him out in the last video at Watkins Mill on my boat. Today, he's taking me out on his boat on Smithville Lake. We're gonna try to get into some crappie, maybe even some bass, so let's go. And before we start, I did have to run into Academy and pick up a bunch of stuff I was missing that I didn't have in my boat. Main thing is these Senkos with the uh, chartreuse tails on them. I ran out of those. I have two left in the boat and that's pretty much it. So I stocked up on some. I didn't go Yamamoto. I went with Yum because they were, you know, $3 cheaper. So if you can save money, save money. What up, dude? How's it going? You hear me romp at you? Yeah, I got scared. Did you see me jump? <laughs> Startle you a little bit. But yeah, man, $6.29 for Gary Yamamoto Senkos when you can just pick up Yums for $2 and some change. You know they were on sale last week, right? Yamamoto's were? Well, you didn't text me and let me know. I'm from the love of guitars, girls, green grass, and guns. Yeah. I was busted outside the bus. After bass first, you look at the crappie first. What do both do? It doesn't matter to me either way. But guys, this right here is the two stroke struggle, man. That's what it is, man. You always got to check that oil, man. You can't just always trust that your motor and your boat's working properly. You guys got to check that stuff. Yeah, and guys, I hope the audio is working okay on this because I took my full skeleton case off and put one of the actual covers on. It's not 100% waterproof. I still got the back open, so hopefully I'm getting good audio. But man, today is a gorgeous day. Usually I would be out mowing, but it rained just enough to where I'm walking through my yard and you're just hearing. So we're going to try to give it one full day of sun. They'll be back at it next week for sure. But. Okay, guys, I hope you can hear me with the case the way I have it set up. We're out here with Ian, and fishing Smithville has its pros and cons. And the, and the way I will say that is if you're out here with a boat, you're relatively new to the water, you really need to learn these lanes. I was talking to him, I've been out here through here a couple times, but he knows these lanes a lot better than I do. And from a naked eye, you can't really tell. It looks like you can go through here, watch your stumps, but it's not true. Some of these lanes, you're talking maybe like a five, six foot width that you gotta kinda stay in, or you're just in stumps. So if you guys do fish Smithville a lot, I hope you know your lanes, and if you're new, wanting to come to Smithville, learn them, man. Talk to some people that know them and learn them. So we just stopped for a minute and tried fishing this little uh, inlet to a creek that's back here. But the water clarity, you're talking eight inches, I would say max, about eight, about eight inches is what you're looking at. Chocolate milk, really stained water. We fished a bank for a little bit, didn't really get any bites, so we're gonna pick it up, we're gonna move, keep on moving just until we find them and locate them, guys. So let's head on to the next spot real quick. All right, guys, we're back. We got crappie set up. I'm throwing a little bobber on mine. A little darker color with a little crappie nibble. He's just fishing your typical crappie jigs. But we're up here in Sailboat Cove, as you can see, and we're gonna try to get some slaunches in the boat. The lightest drag I've ever had set in my life. Oh, way to go, Andy. That branch is dead enough to break. I wrapped that thing about 12 times. Turns. Giant, guys, just giant. Two minutes. He made his way out. We're on, folks. We're on. Yeah, a little better than the last one. Skinny. Skinny is all hell, though. It's like, man, he'll he'll make he'll make nine. Yeah, dude. Guess where you get to go, guys. I, I had a giant. I had a big one on. He got off. I had him on for a while too. 
so guys i've caught three off camera and this is kind of what you're looking at not cleaning these fish even though i think you can keep 15 over nine and 15 under nine i don't even want to deal with cleaning those all right guys so we just kind of left the uh, mid lake we we're kind of like where a sailboat cove is we went east if you guys know where east is we're east there's a net but yeah we only caught about six crappie all under nine inches i got one in the boat all the other ones i just kind of put back because i don't want to deal with cleaning them so we've moved over here uh just kind of went into a random cove where it looks like it might have a small channel or something maybe runs through there i can't tell if that's super shallow or not but we're going to hit these trees real quick and just see what happens battery died that's that youtube struggle but we got a little post sticking up here and a little lay down behind it three casts in a row i've had fish but we're only talking about seven inches but well, we're going to see if we can't pluck some more off of here. Dinks, I tell you, dinks. Right when he shuts the camera off, we get another one. They definitely want it vertical. Do they? They don't want it reeling. That's probably why you've been getting more bites on the bobber. Look at that one, guys. That's the girl you take home to mama. Dude, those are the ones we were looking for. Where is that? Where are those guys been, dude? That's out here in 21 foot of water. That's what we need to like target said, then. We had that cold front last night. They want to be shallow. They want to spawn, but they're holding close to those areas. Steep yeah. transitional banks. Big crop. We'll see if it happens. We'll see if it keeps up, man. And you're talking of a distance of like six foot difference. So we're catching a lot of, you know, seven to nine inch over here. And we just started fishing these two and first fish he pulled off of it. You're looking at something like that. So let's get into those. All right, guys, so we did pretty good in this cove. We actually fished all the way around it. Not a real big cove by any means. And we had a couple little bites on some of the flats. But the minute we found this spot right here that was about five foot flat and an immediate drop off to about 20 foot of water, we started killing them on this. But it kind of slowed down. Uh, got about an hour, hour and a half left. Maybe two hours. I don't know for sure. We're going to check another spot, see if we can't get into some more. But that was a good little spot, man. I'm glad we found those. Money, dude. Tournament's almost over. Just made the cut. All right, guys. So we found a really shallow area back here that was producing some fish on some submerged, I want to say tree trunks for the most part, uh, underwater. And we didn't record a lot of it, but we got some decent-sized crappie in the boat. So uh, yeah, it's about that time. I got to get my kid off the bus. So we're gonna go ahead and head back to the ramp, and I got to put these crappie in a cooler so heading that way all right guys back at the ramp got all the fish in the cooler whenever i get home i'll show you the fish ian's going back out trying to catch some more crappie or bass probably i gotta get home get braden off the bus but whenever i get to the point where i'm getting ready to clean these fish i'm gonna show you guys what we caught so yeah guys real quick just to kind of give a collapse on today man it started off a little slow early we tried to stay away from the main lake to try to cover some of those fish that didn't get as much pressure but after yesterday's rain that water just churned to chocolate milk man super gross super dark couldn't see anything so we moved now like i said the day started off slow we found a couple, picked them off. Finally found those yeah, one or two down. or three little stumps in the water where we collected quite a few of them. And then right there at the end, before I had to go, we found another spot holding some more. So that's a good crappie fishing day for me, man. I'm not a not a big crappie fisherman. I love my bass fishing, but that was a lot of fun, man. Catching crappie is fun, especially when you find them. 
even those, you know, six, seven, eight, nine inch crappie are still super fun to catch. It's, it's a blast. So I'm glad we're able to get on it. I hope Ian can go out there and just keep on slaying. But yeah, like I said, guys, good day out on Smithville Lake today. As soon as I get home to show you those fish, I'll show you those fish. All right, guys, back at home in the basement. Fish are in here. Let's dump this out and see what kind of mess we're dealing with. And I would say just from looking in here, I know Ian caught this one. Probably one of the bigger ones in here. Very good sized crappie. And I got a mess to clean up. All right, guys, and I just went through and counted them real quick. We got 14 fish today. Not too bad. Good little day of crappie fishing. It was a super fun time, man. Again, thanks to Ian for taking me out on the boat today and doing some crappie. But guys, I got to get to cleaning these fish. So like, comment, subscribe, and we definitely will see you in the next one. and guns.